Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with an impromptu live show. I see a lot of people already in the chat. Let me know if you can hear me because I'm going to be running the show myself. It was a little easier to do it, uh, to do some top-down camera stuff than uh, having Alex who is working on his own from home, as most of us are. So uh, he was doing some of the producing of the main shows on Friday, still from, from his house, because you can do that. But I wanted access to the top-down camera, and I wanted to be in, uh, you know, in direct control of it. So I'll be going over to my laptop here from time to time to check this out. And as I said, this is an impromptu live. We're not going to do this every week, but the goal was this week while everybody's home. I mean, let's just hang out. I had a few planes that uh, I was going to put together for the show season because Jonal would be right around the corner. Um, we're supposed to find out on Thursday if Jonal is going to be a go or if it's going to get delayed again. Like I said last Friday, uh, I've heard from a birdie that might just get delayed, but I haven't heard anything yet either way. But um, I do enjoy... Um, you know, enjoy building these models. I built so many of them. So I saw some questions in here. I was watching. Uh, somebody asked, Fred, Frederick Chaplin asked, is the T-33 easier to fly than the Hawk? Um, the only thing I could say is, for me, bigger is always better. Uh, the T-33 is going to be a little bigger. It's an awesome flying plane. But I'll be honest with you, this plane was the first plane I learned how to fly EDF jets. So the BAE Hawk came out November of 2017, I believe. And this was the first big release that came out when I got hired. So I got hired around September of 2017. I think the F-8 Crusader might have came out a month before this. So it was the small little 64 millimeter, but this was the first jet. And I remember Alpha saying like, if you're gonna learn, he kept telling me, get Avanti, get Avanti, get an Avanti. But at that time I'm like, I don't know, sport jets just don't do it for me in the looks. Even though I love to fly the Avanti, I just, it doesn't appeal to me as much as something scale. So uh, I got myself a Hawk and I still have it to this day. It's hanging up, it's hanging up way high in my ceiling. I didn't want to take it down, but it's still going and it's got the, the old chicken wire struts on it. And I bought the upgraded struts that now this new high performance version comes with. And I never actually installed them on the old one because I said, I'll do it if I ever break those struts. And to this day, I still have yet to break it. I mean, she is beat up. I don't have the pedo, the nose pedo tube anymore like most people uh, would on this jet. But, um, you know, what can I say? It's, it's a great jet. I do think, though, as you get into it, I don't know, something about a bigger model just always makes it feel easier. I don't know if you guys experienced that, but, you know, this jet is still awesome. Yes, it'll fly slow. And the price on this jet is easier to get into than a bigger jet you know i wouldn't recommend i don't know what your price situation is but like you know the f-22 to me the 90 millimeter f-22 would be a perfect thing to learn on but uh that might be too pricey for somebody because you know again it depends but this model we have three versions right now the arf is available and you're getting we still have the high performance version which now carries that in runner motor that debuted with the f-30 with the f-35 um, and it's got the upgraded landing gear already built into it for about $40 more than what we still have the regular version with the Outrunner and the, the uh, chicken wire gear. But again, it works. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's retractable landing gear. If you're just learning jets, why go all out? You can always upgrade those things later. But um, this the Hawk on the Outrunner system was super fast. You could see a ton of those videos here. So I'm just expecting maybe a little more efficiency out of this Hawk now with that in-runner system. But either way, both are awesome. And I do like the red arrow scheme it comes in. And this Model 2, I'm not sure you guys can let me know. I didn't get a chance to check. But uh, the gray version, we have an all base gray. This was one of the first models that came out in just a prime gray so people could put on any livery they want. And if you watched our March Madness tournament, a few guys definitely had their Hawks uh, on display for that. So again, today we're going to take it out of the box. I'm going to put it together because I'd be doing this anyway. And I'm going to get her set up with the Admiral regular basic six channel uh, receiver, no gyro included. And uh, the 4,000 is the recommended pack for this. I'm, I don't know if I go 5,000. I don't remember if I ever did. I would always fly it on this one uh, when I was really working on this one. But again, when you work for the company, you're going out, you're always filming usually whatever's next or whatever's the newest, trying to learn those things. So I haven't had a chance to fly my Hawk in a while, but I definitely take it out from time to time, especially when we get to shows. So, I wanted to say, there should be no music. Turn down the music. 
What music is in the background? I hear somebody saying. There should be absolutely no music in the background. If you hear anything, that's just people walking around upstairs and it happens. But there definitely shouldn't be any music playing. So, is, who's here? Any questions? So let's get started, guys. I just want to see. Let me check my top-down camera. Make sure that works. There we go. Can you still hear me? Perfect. We're here. So let's get... I'll do the unboxing from from that side. Let me just get my... My... Exacto knife. So you just gotta... Crop the tape here on both sides. Upside down. There we go. And again, as you expect, it's been a while since I opened up a hawk. I was kind of excited about it, but mine was not the one that I was bringing to shows. Is definitely not display worthy anymore. So after a while, you gotta sort of replace the ones that are not display worthy with something nice and new. And there she is, guys out of the box looks just as I remember it looking at the top down so you get your manual which is perfect you get your go get them wire which I don't know about you I save every single one of these because I use them for so many different things it's unbelievable uh, we got over here there we go I always cut one side, just flap the other side over. And we'll take everything out of the box. And then, wow, that's the first time. So that broke. But I'm always so impressed with how this goes. So we have our under, under catch. I rarely fly with the center line tank. I usually just forget to bring it. I don't know about you guys, but it never affected anything when I did have it. Um, but it's nice that it's there. So we'll pull that out first. These guys, I know I get a lot of questions on these. These are nylon hinges or plastic hinges, sorry, that these are only really supposed to be used when you have an accident. You know, if you rip off a control surface, then you use these. I know I've seen questions, our customer service has gotten questions where people, because they're in the box, there are people who cut their control surfaces off just to mount these right away. And that is, uh, you know, that's not what you should be doing. The foam hinges are more than acceptable on all your foam jets. This is just if you want to. And I'll tell you, every any foam hinge I've ever broken, I've just used foam tack or the free wing glue that comes in the box. I've never, or Blenderm, uh, like 3M tape, uh, to tape my hinges together. I, I don't use these. I've never used these in my life, but I have a wall of them. I save them because I save everything. I don't know why, but I've never, never used these. But you do not have to install those out of the box so now i'm just looking top down here oh i can't get at that there we go we got our vertical stabilizer comes out nicely and again decals already applied on the red arrow scheme you don't have to touch anything which is nice looks beautiful right out of the box the only one you'd have to do and that's why they did the base gray because if you want to call Callie who if you see man she is cranking away still she's got her contest going she's still in business uh, she'll get you a nice scheme I put a gray one in a black dragon scheme once a long time ago but uh it no longer exists unfortunately for me so let's see we got our whole wing one piece wing guys which is always nice on uh for an assembly you know makes everything so much easier and for possibly transporting but with the 70 millimeters i don't think i've ever taken one apart to uh transport it these 70 millimeters are usually the just about the right size for for any car to uh fit it but look at that everything included in there we'll throw our plastic on the floor be dirty with it but you got all your your nest now i think this came out before there were nylon uh before they did the like the hinging the ribbon cables that came in but all tucked away in there so we'll get to that in a little bit but taking a look at the back retracts again the upgraded landing gear already installed you got your four servos already installed so we just got to put the control horns on and we'll show you how i you know and again when i put this together guys call me out if i'm doing it not the right way that you guys do it but everybody's got their own way of going about things. And I've probably built, just free wing planes, I've probably built over 100 of them uh, already in my life. So, 
Taking out this foam piece and this foam piece to unveil. Oh, we'll do the fuselage next. We got our horizontal stabilizer. So we can unbox this. And I'm staying with the top down shot for this until I get it all out of the box. And you can see right here, everything looking good. Again, long cables. You're going to use your go get them wire, tuck them in. Servos already in there. And again, this is the perfect time, guys, when you unbox a model, tug on these a little bit. You know, if you give them a little force, they'll fall. They'll probably fall out. You always see things like, you know, and we'll tug on the landing gear too. But, you know, occasionally the factory doesn't get the, you know, the person puts the just not the right amount of glue or something. And this is the chance for you guys to check that. So this is what we're going to do today when I set it up. These are all things that I do because obviously sometimes when we're filming a new product, they only send me one. So when I go out, to, when we go out to film it, we got to make sure that baby is perfect from the get-go to the end of our filming. So we get everything we need out of it. And, you know, we got to check it like everyone else. So here we go. You got your fuselage all in one shot. And again, guys, I'm going to do my best to look over at the, uh, at the comments from time to time. But again, I'm by myself, so the chat, again, we're here to hang out, so, you know, I'm going to get busy with this, but you can see, fuselage looking good, top down, you got your ESC all in there, and this is a great time, while you're looking at it, let's check, it doesn't move, it's all tucked away, screwed down nicely, because if that was moving, that could cause you a problem, check your motor wires, you can see them right there, you might as well check that right at the start. Because once you assemble it, so you know, I don't know about you, but I hate disassembling just to uh, just to do it. And then I'll show you in there. And there it is, the in-runner motor on the inside and opening up the canopy. We got our blue box, the older version, not the big M MFCB. And all the wires that we're going to plug in. I'm probably going to put my receiver. I always like this model because the receiver can go right next to that blue box right in front and uh, nice and out of the way. You can have one lead going up, one lead going to the front, and you should be good to go. All right, so I think that's it for everything out of the box. Let me just check. Oh, no. Nope. There's a pocket. And this is all our hardware. That's what I'm looking for. So you got control rods. You got your grip for the battery. And it looks like two, four, six, seven, about eight screws. And then 12. So about 12 screws total. Perfect. Always love that. So let's put that down. Let's get this out of here and we'll go back to our main screen. What's up guys? So all laid out on the table, get rid of that thing. And I hope you guys are enjoying your Monday, enjoying your time. You know, it's been, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy to think where, where we were about a month ago. Uh, to where we are today and I just hope all you guys are safe your families are good and you're doing everything you can to uh, make the best out of an unfortunate situation right now because that's the best thing you can do so checking it out so here we go see sometimes a little glue I always like to fold my hinges right at the start especially foam hinges work them back and forth you don't want to stress out the servo when you put them on like I always did this from even my old days just go through uh, each foam hinge. And again, when I drop that gear eventually, I'm going to tug on them. Tug on your landing gears. Make sure everything looks good. But we're going to go right by the book because I don't remember this being too hard. I'm going to assume we do the tail first, the horizontal stabilizer, but we'll go right down the line. Yep, install your horizontal stabilizer, and it's going to be with four with four of the two by six by 10 screws. So those must be the main ones. And then the two by six by eights. So yeah, I use the, the flush mount screws for the vertical stab. So I'm dumping, I'll dump all the stuff here so that you guys can see it. Did. did I still miss something in the box, Ole? Let me check. I will check. Oh, yep. My glue. I guess we would have found it later. 
Yep, my glue and my fences and my pedo tube, which is gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna break off in about two seconds. I know, and a couple antenna. So vertical fins and my my glue, but I already have so many of these open. I'm not gonna waste that one. I use this glue for everything, but I've already got a set of this opening. And I, I mean, I I'm telling you, it's just as good as foam tack. I will use it on everything. The mother, thanks for calling me out, old. Sometimes it happens. So we'll dump this out too. But again, I will hold it up. So those are all the screws. You only get two different types of screws. These are your flush mount. So they're going to be for your vertical because uh, they're the most exposed screws. And then all the other ones, four for your main, uh, your main wing and four for the horizontal that we're going to get to. But the first things first, we've got to get our go get them wire through and uh, bring the wire in through is how I'll do it. I'm not even going to use this is laying nice and flat. I'm not even going to use the stand at the moment. So let's see, we want to go through the entire back. So I like to put this in this way first, have it go through, meet me, meet me there. Now I've got the exposed side and then let's unravel our cables. Perfect. And again, this was, I remember when this model came out, like Alpha excited because no glue, you know, this was a no glue assembly. You could always add some if you never think you're going to take it apart. But you know, when you get four screws driven into plastic, you know, again, it's plastic mounts in there. It should be pretty reliable. And if you guys do have, you know, issues with transportation and stuff, you can always take it off. It's not that hard to put it back in. Just a little tedious. That's all. It's like busy work. I don't know about you guys, but I think we all have those busy work tasks that aren't the most exciting parts of your job by any means, but you got to do them anyway. So that comes through, and I always love the way these models are molded because everything just fits so snug. So let's pop it in. There you go. Can't beat that. So then you get you get a shelf. And it matches, the paint's gonna match for when our horizontal goes on, for when our vertical goes on. And again, you have, do have a reverse servo. So once that's what the, the white, red, and black means a reverse servo. And the, uh, oh, I'm colorblind, but orange, red, and brown is a regular servo. I always mix up my colors. And now we're gonna bust in, ooh, I do have something for this. I haven't bought one of these in forever. Magnetic, just at Walmart, a magnetic tray. And once I bought one, I can't understand why I never had one. So get yourself a magnetic tray. You won't lose anything metal. And you can even throw it on the floor to catch all the old screws that you've been missing. Because we've all been there. Drop the screw. Not good, but look at that. Perfect. And then let me get my... Phillips. So what are you guys going on? Biggest fan from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Francisco. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for jumping in. Hope you guys are doing well down there. And, uh, you know, you guys are staying. Biggest by Oh, Spinny Testaverde's in. That's Alex, guys. Working from home. Hanging out. On standby again. Glad James is live to help keep me awake. I'm trying, man. I'm here anyway. So the goal uh, this week, we're going to try to go live this time tomorrow. I have, And I'll let you guys pick the plane a little later on. I got a couple more. But then Wednesday, the weather's looking so good. If I do go live, it may not be at 12. I think I may go live a little later on in the day because Alex and I have to get outside and do some filming. Um, so we found a club that's about an hour drive north. So there's no way I'd, we'd be able to get there early enough for when they open get our filming done, get back to do this at that time. So it may be like a four or five o'clock show on Wednesday. But again, this Friday is going to be episode 13. These, none of these this week count as a regular episode. And depending on what happens Wednesday might depend on what we see Friday, but uh, that's all I'm going to say. And uh, you know, pray on that weather. Let's, let's say that. Let's hope we get good weather because the weather was gorgeous this weekend, but just not enough time to get over there, I had to find, we've been trying to find some uh, 
you know, finding new place to go. Because my club, the CCRC, is closed at the moment um, because it's a state park. Every state park around here in Georgia is closed. So, you know, the field isn't closed, but and I'm not and I'm not gonna sneak over there or anything, get anyone in trouble to try to get some filming in. Watch your plastic mounts to make sure they are secure. Yes, Vic. But I love when it just fits in. Get the screws going. So how many of you guys on here have this model or had it? I know Jameson swears by this one. Jameson loves his hawk. And I, I've never... Has anyone flown the high-performance one yet? Total lockdown here. Inertia. Total lockdown there. Oh, Inertia. I, I could wear my... My doctor's mask if it makes you feel better. <laughs> but has anybody tried this model with the uh, with the inrunner yet? Jameson, did you did you up you upgraded this to the inrunner, didn't you? Because I still never flew with you, Jameson. I've seen you fly. I don't think we've ever done a tandem at all. So uh, you know, let me go. We got to do that if there is a null at some point, but. I'm getting nervous for even Jet Jam, too. Jet Jam is June, so, you know, who knows? Just Plain Crazy. New plane release? We always have something in the works, but I didn't say that. You did. <laughs> also, all clubs over here are closed. Jets and Wings. Jets and Wings in the Netherlands, guys. He's helping us out so much over there. He's doing German. He's going to be doing German videos for us, and we're supposed to get started on that, but, uh... I think we're gonna have to wait a little bit till he does this dr james in the house you would not want me as your doctor because i don't have the steadiest hands so there are probably some guys in rc that would make better surgeons than the surgeons out there so we are we are in all right now we're gonna do vertical stab is next so again just work your work your control surfaces a little bit you know, never just attach your servos to a tight surface because that could, you know, it's it's always good to get, it's going to get worked anyway, but just give it a little work before you, uh, you go through on all your foam surfaces. And let's see. Yeah, no glue for this one either. And I just got to remember it's been a while. So they want it going... So there's a little there's a little circle in the vertical stabilizer hole like right there that's where you're gonna drop the the wire through so that you get a perfectly flush surface on there so that could be let's see how hard that is let's get that through here because one thing about these I have to do a little bend on this wire here Put a little arc into it. I have so many of these and I, I use them for, you know what I use these for actually work well? I've done it on this. If you guys have like a pin vise or a little pin drill, when this snaps off, cause inevitably you're gonna snap it off. That's just how they do. I trim a little bit of this. I pin vise one side, pin vise the other, glue it in. And then it you got a rod, a metal rod right through it and you'd be hard pressed to ever break it again. So, uh, that's what I've, I've probably used these, these go get them wires more times for that than for anything else. And also bamboo, bamboo skewers, bamboo skewers from, uh, from the grocery store. Um, they work great as a replacement pedo. You just spray, put a little chrome spray paint on it and it fits perfectly in the front. Uh, I've done it on this model numerous times in the past. So just a little, little tip there. So they want you to come through here huh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna see if i can i'm gonna pull this wire right through let's see if i can catch it first because there's two compartments here so first off slide this all the way down because that's getting in my way get the sticker out of there for now that gets in my way and ooh, the pressure is on luckily i'm not racing west with this one if you guys Saw me and Wes, we did a T33 race a while back, and that was fun. We both had our T33s, see who could build it the fastest. I beat him, but I also had built one prior to him doing it. All right, 
Now I just want to pull that out a second. Right, I need needle nose. Needle nose, where are they? There we go. Got my toolbox. How about you guys? You have different tools for your field box and for your for your workshop. I'm like that too. I can't. I hate having to like go back and forth from the field box to the home box or the home wall. All right, so I just first I just pulled the wire through that circle in there. It's hard to see. I could move it closer there, but there's a little circle in there. And then now I'm gonna catch it with the go get em wire and finish the pull. But it makes it a little easier to do it that way than to try to get this really long rod through the entirety of it. So now I'm gonna come back this direction till I see my guy. There he is. And. Perfect. Now let's hook them. Hook them, hook them, hook them. It was funny to watch you spank us. <laughs> Thank you, Rackham. Yeah. I just, I just built so many. A lot of people think they built a lot. And I'm sure a lot of guys have, but I'd be hard pressed. I still don't know if there's a single customer who has every single free wing model. And at this point, I think there might be like four free wing models that I haven't built yet. Um, that are still currently for sale and you know obviously nature of the beast when you're building them for shows and stuff you know sometimes you're building multiple of the same one you know a lot but you just get used to it you get a rhythm and a flow but it's been a little while as you may imagine as you guys can see for us with the latest free wing models but they are coming all right so now look perfectly flush on the vertical stab and now we're going to use those four smaller flush screws that come with it and they drive all four of them drive in right on the side and the white part is actually a sticker on this model so the whole fuselage is painted red the blue is paint but the white is a sticker so the sticker covers the hole so you're just going to want to pop that a little bit the hole out of the way and then if you're really crazy you could always touch that up or something if if it bothers you but none of this bothers me RC Informers here. What's up, Rich? What's going on, man? Hope you're living the life there down in Florida. I don't know if your field is closed too, but you fly at a dump, so I doubt the dump is closed. You could probably still get out. And my fingers, whenever you're doing this live, I don't know why, it's like part of me can, can do this and not realize that you know, I don't even see how many how many people are in the chat right now. Let me check. I don't even know. Should I be nervous? Whoa, 107 people. Maybe I should get a little nervous. Our first live when we went, when we announced the uh, the T33, I'll tell you my heart started pounding when I saw 750. I think we hit almost 800 people in there for that announcement. That first one, then my audio went off. Lucky I didn't just cry and, and leave the live stream. <laughs> I was doing that without Alex, who was on vacation at that time. And, uh, you know, just went through it. Oh, Hangar 51, he won the gift card for betting on me. Thank you. I hope you use the gift card on something good. And we got to do more. I'm going to, I'm probably going to toss into uh, Wes's 3000K party. I went into his show last night. He sees approaching 3,000 uh, followers, which is awesome. You know, Wes got his start when I was doing the fan flights. I'd still like to do the fan flights, but um, I had a couple people get mad when, you know, when I asked them if I could put their video up, and then when I put their video up, and the whole point was, I'll load one video up there and just get everybody your channel. That was the whole idea of it, just to see the fans go, and a couple people got mad about it, so I said, you know what, that's going to end that. I'm not dealing with that all the time, but so many people now have started YouTube channels, and guys, if you have a video you want me to share, just hit me up hit me up on facebook hit me up here you know I'm, I'm all over the place i'll happily share your your video and stuff as long as it's a motion product of course but i'll share it through our network you know we got the email i sometimes i put in a you know latest youtube section i'm doing those emails that you guys read you know i happily draw attention to your channels if that's what you guys are trying to do but by all means if you got products if you're selling products like i know uh like light burner i haven't tried your uh, afterburner yet again I gotta most of my planes though I, I I gotta keep them stocked 
I, I would love to, you know, these are all motion planes, so when you go to an event, you want to show it how it comes stock. But a little afterburner from time to time would be nice to do. Like I said, light burner I haven't tried is. I haven't tried Goonie actually yet either. Uh, the only one I tried was the RC Geek, and it's still in the Blue Angels jet back there. And that thing's awesome. I love the way his flickers, but, uh, you know, really cool thing. So, okay, tail section now done. That was eight screws, guys. And, you know, if you're a faster screwer than me, <laughs> didn't come out right. Uh, you know, you get that done pretty easily. But now we're going to go on. The next step will be the main wing. So I'm going to use the, this is what you want to use your uh your tray for and i grabbed the robot tray because everybody was asking where my other trays came from my, my my other plane stands and everybody knows where they came from now but i grabbed this one and oh that's another thing with with any jet always put your canopy back on before you put it in a tray um I do because I don't know about you, but no matter what tray I do, if you have this small edge, you're always going to get little bumps in the uh, in the foam if you push down too much. So I always put the canopy back on just a little added protection there for when you do this. So let's go top down for this section, I guess, since I have the access to it. So there we go. Everybody's watching and not working. Well... You can work and watch. That's the beauty of working from home. I'll have the TV on a lot while I'm in the back. I throw on pot. I don't know about you guys. I'm not, I don't listen to music as much as when I'm doing stuff. I always listen to some sort of podcast. I like getting information. Alex, if you're still watching, share that podcast. Um, what's the name of that, that pilot podcast that you had shown me? There's an awesome pilot. It's like a, he was an F-18 pilot or something. And he, he does shows where he talks to you know, everyone, and like each show is dedicated to a different aircraft, and he'll get pilots who've flown in them, and really awesome. Oh, yeah, and guys, Spinny, Spinny, I'm going to make you a moderator. I'm going to give you a wrench. How do I do that? Head moderator. All right, Spinny's got a, a wrench, because that's Alex. And Alex is a Jets fan and a drone flyer, so that's where Spinny Testaverde comes from. Because Vinny Testaverde is probably the last solid quarterback the Jets had. Sorry, sorry, Alex. <laughs> but, you know, Al Pennington was pretty good. But, and now your new guy. All right, so I've unraveled my main wing. And now, obviously, when the canopy is on, it makes it harder to pull out, but I kind of tuck it in and grab it later. That's how I'm going to do this one today. Because again, if I didn't have the canopy on, then as you're pressing down and doing this, you might run into issues where you're just going to, you're just going to knock the foam a little bit too much. So now one thing I remember about this jet has two little pieces of plywood on the wings. And you want to be careful with those two because they will... They will connect in the wrong spot. Now let's see. Ah, see? You can actually accidentally slot it on and not have the those plywood bits go inside the foam, and then you get a whole little dent on the side. And I know it's hard to see at this portion because I'm on the top-down shot, but well, I'm going to switch back to the main. Forgot I was on the top down because I'm doing it like this now. So right here, there's a little piece of plywood and it's hard to see, but there's two grooves on the fuselage side. You just want to work those down. There you go. Because you don't want to get the dents in the foam. And there we are. Now the screws are going to join us even more together. Perfect. Perfect. Now we go to here. So I'm excited. So if we do go out, Alex, to film on Wednesday, I'm probably going to bring this bad boy too. We might as well get a flight on this. And I think what I'll do, I'll bring my original too. I'll bring the OG and just do a quick flight on that one. Um, just, to, just to show you guys, you know, the difference. 
But again, anybody new in the hobby, like, you know, you don't have to be, you don't need an in-runner to get started. You don't need, you know, an outrunner. And that is wild. Did I lose a screw? Oh, wow, a screw. Two screws came out, and I almost lost one on my own table. But, uh, you know, you don't need the in-runner. Again, but for 40 bucks more, I believe, right now, based on the prices of both, you're getting the upgraded gear included and the in-runner option. So, you know, it's a good deal. But if you want to just break your cha, you know, break your, uh, break yourself in, you can cut your teeth with an outrunner and the original and the chicken wire struts. They're going to be fine because a model like this can land rather slow. So, so is there anybody who's going to go to Jonal regardless of when they reschedule it or if they reschedule it? Or if they reschedule it, are you guys out and just going to wait till Null in the fall? Because we'll be at both. And if you know us when we go, we obviously we don't sell there. But we display, we demo, we hang out, we have fun. We'll film you flying your planes. There we go. I think we caught it. Yeah, bring in the fuselage closer now. And we got a little bit of white tape on the top. So the white. There we go. Let's break that. And one more screw, and we are done with the assembly. So then after this, I get right to plugging it in and binding her up. Because um, next is the control control rods. And I want to make sure all my servos are centered and everything before I put those on. And then I do all the miscellaneous bits, the peripherals at the very, very end. All right. Perfect. So now she will lay flat for the most part. So I'll get rid of that. Get her down. Lay her this way. And let's get the denim wire out of the way. And there you go, guys. I mean, that's 12 screws. And you got a, a good looking uh, Bayhawk in front of you. And if you want to buy an extra pilot or if you had a crash T33, you can throw his you can throw his pilot in there in the back. You know, not hard to peel off the canopy, and that's something to do. And I believe the Bayhawk guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Alpha did um, 3D printed parts that you can you can do for the cockpit on this one too. I think it might have been one of the first models he did that for, or maybe that didn't come till the F4. But I'm sure somebody out there has made a cockpit that'll work perfectly uh, for this model. So now we're going to get to the install of the receiver. So I'm going to start plugging everything in. So I got my big rat's nest that came from the main wing. Got all my wires here. And what I'm going to do, first things first, is you want to remove the tray. Four screws inside. You want to remove the tray, plug everything in because then you're gonna tuck it underneath the tray and never touch it again. That's the, uh, that's the goal there. So, one, and two. GB Linden. GB Linden, it's too early for wine on a Monday, isn't it? For you, what is it, nine, 9.30 by you? Or do you got your you got your glass of wine going right now. Oh, you might see my screw bounced underneath and got caught by the magnet. Take it out and this was to the back just so you remember right now we're nice and clean and i guess we'll go top down for this there we go now this camera i can't like zoom in anymore but i can always raise up it's an autofocus but now everything's out so we're going to start getting things plugged in and again the boring part of this this is like watching teeth dry that's why when i make a teeth dry watching paint dry 
Um, this is why whenever I make, you know, videos, I, I skip a lot of this or I just show it in time lapses because for the most part, if you're building one of these, you're going to get the idea uh, from one. So we have, let's start with the, I always like to start with my ailerons. I work the same way I'd work through the transmitter. And this is going to be my rudder because I push the sticker all the way back. But we can test that. Landing gear, landing gear, and aileron. So I got my two, my two ailerons. And you can see in here, we've got two slots. So positive on these old blue boxes. The positive side on either side is inside. So they will be opposites of each other. So aileron, yellow, the yellow's on the inside. Yellow, yellow. Now you know what? I'll do the flap because flap is actually uh, up against the wall of it. So we'll do a flap servo and a flap servo, and then I shouldn't have to do much transmitter work on here because I'm just going to connect it to my original one. I'm just going to copy my original settings over, sorry, and bind it up. When I do, I should have did that before, but we didn't. We didn't get that prepared. I was had to get a lot of Monday morning busy work out of the way before we committed to this. It's time to get fully chance. And then yesterday, how about you guys? I have to be outside. I always have to be doing something. So yesterday, man, I was doing tooth paint recommended by Dr. James. <laughs> can't live anything down man when you're live you just make mistakes that's why i like to edit because you got to see I've, i'm sure alex could cut an entire highlight reel dedicated to my foul ups in my stand-ups and stuff elevator uh all right rudder we said don't has doesn't have a uh i forgot to pull the the sticker back so i'm gonna call that rudder and we're gonna but if I hit the landing gear switch and the rudder moves, then we'll know we'll do that. And the landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. All right. See, now this is tough because the gear on the one side, they already have, so they have a plug for the nose steering servos already plugged in on this side, and some of the nose lights are already plugged in. I'd just rather not remove anything, so... Come on, baby. Gotta press it between. Why is it always so tough when it's a servo wire between other other wires? There we go. And where was that other landing gear? And I got fat fingers, so getting in here was never fun. You could probably remove the blue box and then just put it back on if you were so inclined. Come on, baby. I don't want to bend your pin. No, nope, I'm going to pull the elevator out. Put the gear in and then get back. Fix the elevator between it. There we go. And then I should have lights. So these are nav lights. Last two should be my wingtip because that's the other thing you get with the with the Hawk, which is nice. You get the nose light, which is awesome. I love it on the L39. Love it on this. And now, funny, on this blue box, um, I'll try to show you, but on the blue box, the lights are the only thing where the positives go outside. So that is a bit confusing. Just, you know, be mindful when you're doing it. So the lights go the opposite direction. The lights are going to have the red, because the red is your positive on the lights going out. Man. My back is already starting to hurt, because this weekend I was doing masonry. I put in some, I put in 25 steps around my backyard. It was like a sloped path to go back there, and man, I was dead last night. I woke up with aches all over, getting old. Come on, come on. 
and settle in. Oh, I had you in there. You know what? We're going to do that then. Yeah, we'll do this one first. Sorry. And I'm going to squeeze him on the other side. Which one of you? I need to be. Alright, so now everything is plugged in. So what I would do at this point, you could zip tie them. You know, you could, I mean, I could just put the tray down and you're never going to know better underneath. But if you're concerned with the cleanliness of the inside, then grab a piece of tape. I'll grab a piece of tape and I'll just tape all the wires up a little bit just to keep them together. Just so it's not as much of a rat's nest, but it shouldn't. It's not going to affect anything either way. It's more personal preference than anything. So just grab a whole heap of them. Every single wire that's coming through. Tape them all together. Sorry, I haven't even checked over here. You sure you're supposed to do that now? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Alex. Let's not call me out too much. I'm allowed to call myself out, Alex. Call me out. All right. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to screw this back down. And we will call it plugged in. Which is nice. Then we can get to the receiver portion, which is again, all these leads are coming off the blue box that you're going to plug into plug into your receiver anyway. So that'll go a lot faster. And the perfect mounting space. And that's another thing we're going to talk about today, guys. Any receiver really that has aerials, you want to mount them at 90 degrees. I've seen so many people at the fields open up their planes and they're, they just chuck their receiver and they don't even mount it down let alone you know obviously if you have a gyro receiver you're gonna you're gonna mount it down and people even do that but then they leave their leads just together you know they don't they don't even think about their aerials and then you know they blame brownouts or you know whatnot when you have you know if your battery is in the way of the, your two aerials from the if your receivers here where this finger is and your aerials are behind your battery here and you're in that turn you're getting no signal you will lose you will brown out and hopefully you turn enough where you catch it back up again if you're lucky if you have enough altitude but if you don't then you're gonna be uh reinstalling all this in an r plus at some point so now let me get out my receiver it's over here so again guys admiral receiver if you've ever used one uh comes with one bind plug for this one and a piece of uh, double-sided tape I'm gonna use my teeth to open up the receiver but again like these leads are, come like that some people will just slap it in there and leave it like that no 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 you want to go 90 degrees in two directions so either up and to the side out and up like that when you mount it so I'll show you when I when I get it in but let's get her plugged in and bound up first. So I'm gonna put the bind plug in first. How many people are hanging on a Monday? Oh, 98. Good, thank you guys for, for joining. And what are you guys building? I can't wait guys, I got the servos in by the way for that zero, so I'm gonna get started with that. Hopefully this week at night, I'm gonna get working on that, but that's going to be a slower process project, but I definitely want to get that baby going sooner rather than later. So first we're going to go throttle. And again, on the Admiral receiver, you guys see all the positives go towards the sticker on the top on all of them. So throttle. Aileron. And when it comes out of the blue box, there's only one lead. Don't let that confuse you for any reason. Elevator. Rudder. Gear. The gear has three. Which is interesting. Maybe somebody could explain to me why that is. I don't know. But there it is. Everything's plugged in. Fine plugs in. She is looking good. So now transmitter. So I got the DX9, and it's upside down. I could hold like this, but 3D printed cover. Love that, man. Gimbal protector on Thingiverse. 3D print yourself one. 
will save you some trouble. So, you know what, I'll go back to the main camera. I don't think you'll see this anyway. Here we go, and I'm just gonna copy over my model, and we are almost set here uh, for this. And then we could get into, again, some setup things with the, uh, with the throws, you know, how you set them up, how you do that, but now I gotta do all the control rods. So where did that go? So let me find my hawk. There it is, hawk. So you get into your model first, and then we go back to system setup, and we go to model utilities, and it'd be impossible to show, but copy model, and then you copy from hawk to add new model, copy, and then it's just gonna say the name that you already had and copy, but now you gotta make sure you go back in and select that model. Cause I've done that before where I've copied the model and just started working and then realized I screwed up my original model or I bound to the original model and then, you know, had to do it over. So we got Hawk copy and we were all set there. So transmitter now goes off. We got our battery and I'm just gonna hold her down. If she flies off the table, we're live so it'll be fun. And we'll, <laughs> we'll have to work on another one, but I doubt she will. Plug in, hold the nose. There we go. Find button. Finding. Find failed. Find failed. Start over. Do it again. Did I plug something in the wrong way? I got a failed buy. Bomb plug back in. Mm -mm -mm. All my positives are correct. All right, put a throttle out. Try it again. button first. Find complete. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta have the transmitter a little farther away. I can hear that. Hear that. All right. We well, are good there. And now let's check. First thing I like to do is drop that gear. So put your battery back in. Make sure. There we go. Gear is working. So now, now at this point, now that it's bound, I'll, I'll put the battery in. I'll just leave the battery plugged in while I'm doing this. Um, I already had, I gotta put a, I could actually put a throttle cut in just in case I hit the table, but maybe I'll just live dangerously because it would make for a better show if it flew off the table <laughs> into my coffee. Yeah, it was too close, right Vic? Sometimes it happens, but it's funny on these. Um, oh, there it is. I didn't see the light at first. So I was thinking, oh, did it not get enough? Was it not getting power for a second? Cause it's rare that happens, but it does. But you'd be amazed, you know, people do that the first time and like, oh, receiver's done, doesn't bind. Ah, help me. And then just takes customer service, say, do this, do this. Don't, don't fret, don't fret. This is RC. And then I just, all oh, these Velcro straps. We can come out with something new. A new way of doing this. That would be awesome. Or I should just, I used to just Velcro them back in the day, but with jets, I, I use the, I never actually glue down the, um, the, what's it called? This thing, the black, the, the slip. I would just slip it underneath and then, you know, tighten down as hard as we can. All right, so that's in. I will worry about mounting my receiver later. That's not the focus here yet. That's one of the last things I do, but I will take out the bind plug right now so that next time I plug in, I don't have to rebind it. Not that that would do anything. It doesn't change anything. 
if you if you make your setup now in the transmitter and all that stuff you're gonna be fine and actually I gotta turn my battery around this one wants to be the opposite way that was a little waste of time there let's get you completely out of the way here for one second so I don't hit you Whenever you do things live, it's like a nightmare. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. All right, and then tuck that back there. That's how you're going to be mounting it normally. I forget the CG, but we get into that. I forget where I kept my battery in the other one. I'd have to look. I probably have it marked off, but we'll get there. All right. So, again, one of the first things I'm going to do right away tug on them give them a good tug on your gear you're never gonna hit it you know that hard and heck you know you're gonna if you're gonna have bad landing do it right here on the table there you go I shouldn't need to glue these in I trust that they're there I've just checked them I've given them good solid tug like I'm not trying to pry them out you know for the most part this baby's gonna come down so nice and gentle you know when you get your landings in but uh it should be good to go you know you can but look at that nice solid spring loaded gear i mean look how low she sits i dig that boom and this one i think it's 239 on sale in the in the states uh, for the chicken wire ones but was it 279 right now for for what you're getting here? really nice all right now let's do linkages so and we'll go by the book so I'll bust out my robard again. And I'll do nose this way. We got our nose light. So I'll start with my aileron and looking at all my control services. Let me check again. So aileron, moving the ailerons, flaps, flaps. I keep flaps. I'm still a top left guy. I don't like the, I don't like the D switch for my flaps. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm still a, a rook when it comes to that. I like, I like this switch right next to my gear. I know it's there. I like using the top ones. I hate using the face ones when I fly. I, I don't know why. West, West yells at me. Oh, no steering is working too. Want to check that? And rudder, servos on the other side, and she's working. So we're all good. And I just want to make sure air is coming out. Yeah, so motor leads are in the right direction as it should be because they do check that there but you never know occasionally you might air might blow the opposite way you change two motor leads but we checked that when we opened it to make sure they were at least all tight you know smile stands from hk so much better than robar yeah i think i might have a couple of those funny funny that you said that i do like the model stands you know that that i got from from hk back in the day i still use them love them love them and that's okay so we got so now in the book let's see what they say as far as control horns which is which obviously there's one ball link one and that's going to be for the rudder because it's the odd man out but there is a page dedicated to your push rods and where they go so your flaps are the 86 millimeter ones and they're going to be the longest so that's how i you know i'll lay them out so i'll put them right there they're my two longest. Then we got the oh the rudder and the the rudder and the ailerons are 55. So all three of these are 55. All right. And then the middle size is the elevator. It says which is 67. So is that correct? The elevator is the ball link yes ah two ball links i'm sorry the elevator gets the ball link ones there were two i was missing one so you get three 55s for your two ailerons and your rudder you get the two ball links for the elevator which are the middle uh, the middle size 67 and you get two longer ones which are going to be for your flaps and it is all it is not all one to one so on the servo they're all going into the first hole and then a few different ones on the uh on the control horn itself on the control surface so 
let's do a flap on this side and this one they don't give you any they don't give you any hooks to uh, snap on which is cool with me fly it as you will so elevator is one or I'm sorry flap is one to two so I'm gonna start here and I like to go whatever way is closest to the hole I don't like my horn bending as much so straight on that way and flaps flaps I always find the easiest to put on because you can sort of push them all the way down the way you want to go but we're just gonna and after each one you check it there we go turn it let me do it manually and then after I'll show you guys how I do the uh, you know I got one of those little gauges to do the throws but let's check your first flap there we go half full and this is how I had my other one set up so I'm assuming back in the day I did it the way the book called for and I doubt the book changed as far as that goes so now ailerons are also hole one on the servo to hole two on the horn so they're recommending you go less throw so that gives you even some more options because one thing about the hawk man it'll fly like a sport model you know you can probably go really hard with it if you want to do aerobatics the hawk will definitely do it because you see the red arrows they're some of the best when it comes to doing the shows and here too guys this is one another thing you check check your control horns pull on all of these if any of them are going to pop up you know that's something you'd want to do now here you know because if there is an issue find your issues here it helps our customer service team out for helping you but you know it's always much harder to help someone when they're like oh you know i flew it and it, it comes down to well did you check it you know how can we be sure that that happened then and you know all that all that hearsay he said this he said that and we do our best to help everybody and to give everybody the benefit of the doubt but sometimes you just can't you know not everything is perfect so here we go i was a little off on my first attempt and we're going to the second hole and there we go so now aileron that one working now i don't know if it's i'm not going to check i'm not going to worry about reversed yet until that's the next step we do now i'll turn around we we'll get the other we we'll get the other side on the flight sim yeah man i think i'm gonna <laughs> i think i'm gonna have to get that flight sim seems like everybody and their mother now is doing the sim parties at night and i may have to do it I may just have to do it. So we said hole number one on the flap to hole number, oh, hole number two on the flap. Whoops, I have to change out the other one. So both the aileron and the flaps are control horn hole number two. So if you're building this, if anybody, would have been funny if somebody had one to build along with me. But I'll probably post this on the product page and it'll live forever anybody wants to go through but now imagine this video is already it is already 103 so I'm gonna go until it's all set up but this would be a 10 minute video if we're gonna do it regular so think about all the minutiae that gets cut out here so now we're on hole number two so I'm just gonna swap this one down a little bit more and I'm gonna probably have to turn it Give it one turn out. Really press up against it. Is that Robert Patrinsic? Did I see Robert here? Because Europe, they love this time slot. If they were essential employees, and they're here, so let's check. There we go. That's a lot of flap. I'm probably going to have to change that later. But see, yeah, that's pushed as far down as possible. We'll get that all changed. We could also sub trim it. And what I do with my other aileron, I never brought it over. So we are at one and two. One and two. And yeah, this is boring. GB Linden, do it, James. Do those control horns, right? Isn't this fun? <laughs> Isn't this the fun part of the hobby? This is what we love to do. But push come to shove, like even if they're models where these are already attached, I still check them. I still end up going through and making sure. You know, I learned from a lot of people who 
get it right your way so then you can't blame anything if something fails. You go right. All right, ailerons and flaps. All right, so now let's do our tail. We have three more control horns left. Tail and rudder. And the rudder is the only other one that has the white clip on top. And that rudder is one to another one to two. So there's only only the elevators are one to one on here. And I'm gonna go in up. Always do the obviously always gonna do the servo side first. And also on the servo ones, the ones with the clips, I always clip them in first. It's much easier to do when the servo rod is like dangling than it is once you set it up to try to clip sometimes you end up scratching the foam. I don't know if you guys are like me with that. I'm sure you've done that on occasion. And that's always annoying. I don't know about you. It's like I, I whenever I open a new plane, I always forget to like cut my fingernails or something. And then you just scrape <laughs> your plane and you're like, you got to be kidding me. I didn't even get it outside yet. That's why I don't worry about it too much minor dents and dings you see the 01 rudder rudder is on and now the ball links and i just push them in with my thumb i'll use the ball link pliers to take them off but this as i said one to one and this one has to be there's no way you're going to get this rod in from the fuselage side back to the other way and let's see are they calling for any want to check my throws if they call for any weird setup on the no this model calls for nothing as far as up or down work in that foam I didn't do it on the elevator yet work in the hinge but it doesn't call for any millimeters up or down in the control surface on the elevator so they just so when it when it isn't mentioned just set it up straight and work from there one more turn Boom, that's on there. And the last one, yeah, you never get this in the other way, obviously. Get it in, over, and you need a bunch of turns. Good vid, thanks Evan. I mean, this is just live, setting up a plane and letting you guys talk in the chat. I mean, so many guys know each other by now from all the other live streamers who do this, you know, every, pretty much every night there's a new live stream. Uh, somebody out there has a live stream and if people know all the days you know of different people's streams you can totally toss them in the uh, comment section here I know tonight is RC Air Marshal um, good guy actually member of my club here uh, he started his own live stream um, but I think he, he's doing like uh, he's doing sim parties tonight so that's pretty cool hey James what is your opinion on the f4 as a first 90 millimeter no man f4 is F4 is a beast. You're going to want to learn the F4 before uh, you do it as a first. This is a good first one. The T33, the L39, the Avanti is a good first one. The Rebel Jet, another 70 millimeter, if you like sport, is a good first one You know, from us. Uh, and even, I will say, if you have the money, 90 millimeter F22 is a perfect one. I mean, that, that model, when I first flew that one, I'm like, wow, this is a, it can be a trainer, but it can also be so much more. You know, it's one of those models that people get and they can't believe it. Oh, Ves, Ves Pizari, that is Matt Feinstein of Old Hobby King Day. Tuning in. Wow. He was our old, I used to be behind the camera and Matt was the one on the camera. We were doing the craziest stuff with Matt. Thanks for joining, man. I think you kind of need one. Yes, man. You better fly a jet. Can you believe it? Can you believe from where I started? I'm flying these things? Isn't that crazy? That just blow your mind, Matt? That is Matt Feinstein. Say hello to Matt if you guys remember the old days of, uh, I want to say it was, what, six, seven years ago. Now, crazy. Inertia. I have the Yak-130, SU-30, and L-39. What should I get next? Well, the Yak is one, the one model, whether 70 or 90, that I have yet to fly yet. Um, but I heard it's a pretty good pretty solid flyer as well so probably you know at your point it, it, it seems to me and the su-30 is the the e-flight one which from what i heard is a heavy but awesome flying bird you know you can really go anyway it's not like you need another trainer so 
it depends on what you like you know it all comes down to what you like if you want to be crazy like mig 21 is something that's going to be different you know crazy fast an a4 is awesome you know I, the beauty about these planes you don't want them all to fly the same that's why like if, if i have a hawk you know personally like if i had the avanti I would probably get the L39, but if I had the L39, maybe I wouldn't go for a T30, I'd go for something a little different. You know, you want them all to fly. You know, every model should have quirks and things that make them different from each other, right? Just like a real aircraft. What would be the point of flying the same thing over and over and over again, you know? That would be rough. Archimedes. All right, guys, so now we have all our linkages on. Let me just check again. Now, the next step from here, before I mount my receiver, will be... And we'll do the peripherals last. We'll be, let's make sure everything is going in the proper direction. So I turn the model around. I'm not going to hit the throttle. And I'm going to turn left, right. Looking good because the wind's going to blow the wing down. We know the flaps are working. Are we turning? Left turn, rudder left, right, right. Looking good. Elevator up and down. I don't have to reverse anything. So everything is looking good. Now I put my rates and now I do it differently. I don't do separate rates. That's just me. Um, I don't have aileron on one. Cause again, I hate using the front face if I don't have to. So what I do is two sets of rates on a three position switch whenever I fly a model. So I'll do, so right now, let's see what I got. So now I'm holding down into the, down into the left. So you see my full throws. That is all low, so all the way down is low elevator, low aileron, high aileron, keep the low elevator, and then all high. So I'll take off all high, and then I can drop one at a time. That's just the way I've, I do it, and you know, I guess I could be right, I could be wrong, but it, it's just the way that I do pretty much every model. I like two sets, but sometimes, like some models, like the F-35, I keep the ailerons all low. I don't even have, they don't even switch. It's just elevator changes for taking off and landing. So I have more authority that direction. But, um, you know, that's just me. So now they're all good. So now the next step in here is going to be mounting our receiver, making sure that is uh, taped off in the proper, the proper way so we don't lose signal. So actually, with the way this is, I don't know if I want to jam it into the corner i'm gonna go with the top down shot again so you guys can see here we are top down so now there is enough space there's a little shelf here where i could probably just squeeze the transmitter in yep that's where i'm gonna do it so that's how i did it you could just squeeze it in. honestly that probably wouldn't even go anywhere if i didn't even want to put the tape on it but we're obviously going to tape it down for dexterity and I don't know what I did with the little piece of tape. But now at this point, I know that my control surfaces are good. So I'm going to unplug her. So now we don't have any sort of issue. Bind plug is pulled. Transmitter's on. And we are unplugged. So now she's not going to drive off the table. And if she does, then my house is haunted. So the studio is haunted. So let me get some tape. I got some Dubro. There we go. I'll use the Dubro uh, double-sided tape. Comes in nice packages. I dig that stuff too. And my, and it's actually, it, it sticks a lot better than the, than the one that comes with the Admiral sometimes, depending, you know, this is the type of one where you, you, you know, once you stick it, it's not going anywhere. And if you try to take it off, if you eventually go to take it off, you're gonna, you know, you're just gonna be peeling it off the receiver. And I don't use much small little bit right on the back right on the center so if you guys can see it's a small little square there that i use i like to conserve you don't need a ton if it was a gyro i'd use a lot more i'd, I'd flatten out the whole thing but uh this is not a gyro receiver so that's not what we want to do northeast fpv oh spinny loves your stuff dude if you guys could tandem together on the chase stuff unbelievable that would be unbelievable. The chase stuff is so cool. I had tried it, but it was not my thing. So now we have a tape down. Now it's about the leads, the directions of our leads, our aerials. To be honest, with the way these are coming up, I would almost leave one out. Sometimes I like to do that. 
just leave one out of the uh, of the canopy entirely and then the first one I'm gonna put this direction so again 90 degrees in any direction any 90 degrees so this way this way this way this way 90 degrees and you're gonna be golden you don't want to ever have your leads just your aerials just like that so I get some blender or thin tape or you know hinge tape if you if you want to call it that I say blender but I have a fresh pack here I just want to see if I have some that's already open don't like opening I know I like to use stuff till it's gone till I open up a new one I don't know that's just me but looks like you guys are getting a brand new 3m hinge tape <clears throat> I'll put that down right there on the table. Cut off a bit. I'll peel it back up. There we go. And we're almost we're almost straight on this model. So we're gonna go right there on the top. One taped up, and then I like I said for this one, I'm gonna have that aerial hanging out. So I'm just going to tape it in that direction going completely north because when my wind happens, it's going to blow the aerial anyway in the direction that I want it. So I'm doing that. So straight up and I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera. So oh, there you go. See my aerials right there. One's going straight up and one's going to the front. Nowhere near my battery, nowhere near electronics. Nothing should, uh, should bother that. I should have no issues with signal. And then when I put my canopy back on, bang, the aerial's just right out there. It's not going to go anywhere. And I'm always going to have a good connection. You know, I don't mind it popping out. You don't have to do it that way. But, uh, you know, it all depends on where you're going to mount your receiver is going to determine where that's going to go. So now we just got our peripherals. So let's go back to this. So what do we got as far as peripherals? We got two fins. They go on the bottom, back by the fuselage, I believe, back by the tail. Sorry, by the nozzle. We got some antennae, and we got a centerline tank. So we'll do the centerline tank, because that's cool. Centerline tank, again, is an MWS railing system, same as any missile uh, from Free Wing that you get or from most, most manufacturers use that. So there's two sets, push it in. And is it a slot forward? Nope, push it back a little bit. There you go. So now you got that bad boy underneath. We got our pitot tube, which I'm not gonna glue in and I'm gonna forget it's here and I'm gonna break it off in about 20 minutes. I know it. So that's gonna happen, because it always does. Jam them. Now he's jammed in there like that's, you don't even need any glue. So really the only thing they're giving you glue for is for a couple of peripherals, which is awesome because you get a whole tube of glue. And this is the kind of glue that, again, I take with me everywhere. So these usually end up in the in the case. And now let's just make sure, we'll check to make sure the which antenna goes where. Antenna C, antenna B, antenna A. So the smallest one is antenna A. So this little guy, and I just put a drop, man, like a pin drop because these things always get going. Is that optional or is a stock gear? Pearl Jam, this is the high performance version comes with this gear. So this came out of the box like that. Um, the high performance version comes with an inrunner now that was debuted with the F35, the 70 millimeter 12 blade and the upgraded gear. When this originally came out, it had the chicken wire struts. You could buy the upgraded gear, but this version comes with. So, and we still have the other version there. So both versions are available. There's my first antenna. And now it's hard to see. The biggest one is going to go up here. And they have little slots in the back for where they go. And I just put a drop, you know, the slightest bit of this on here. Here we go. Bang. And then there's one underneath, underneath the nose, underneath and to the back of the nose. Let's do that. There it is. Little slot is going to be right there. So can I do this with one hand? Oh, we'll get out our, we'll get our thing out. 
Don't be lazy. Last minute. Almost got it here. Don't be lazy. And then we'll hang for a bit, guys. Answer any questions. Sorry I haven't been able to look at all of these. But, um you know, all the comments as I'm going. But the, again, this wasn't about me. It's never about me. I don't want it to be about me. It's about the aircraft and about the community and about everybody just, if you're home and you wanted to hang out, join us. So now the ventral fin, and I believe the fat parts go to the front and it thins out as it gets to the back. And there are two slots right back here for them that they fit perfectly. So let's just a strip of glue here. There we go. Okay. Just use my finger, rub that out. That came out wrong. Rub the glue out is what I meant with my finger. Oh my God. My goodness. And there we go. They're in. So that is it. The only thing left from the pack, you get two, two extra linkage, three extra linkages, and the uh, the battery thing, which I just keep in my case. A lot of times I'm just transferring them from plane to plane. But that'll do it, gentlemen. That is a brand new high performance BAE Hawk T1, T1A, I believe. The Hawk T1A. But that was what, an hour and 20 minutes to go through. And now I hope if you guys have any questions, ask me now. Yeah, Mr. T, he's right. Frederick, F-22, definitely easier than the F-18. Um, you know, more wing loading. It's, it's, it's a big, light baby, uh, the F-22. But it can be crazy. It can high alpha. It could, you can grow with that model, but like you can with the L-39 or the, the Avanti or the T-33. I mean, you hand the sticks to... A good pilot and he's gonna get more out of the plane than you could even imagine but uh, there are tons of videos on all of them so anything you guys want to um, want to know about this all right I'm gonna start answering questions so if you don't mind me looking at the, uh, the camera here can the free wing f-35 from novel 70 handle the spectrum 7,000 milliamp battery I doubt it man I, I don't know if you want to put a, a 7,000 milliamp battery in a 35 the, the question becomes weight. You know, could it handle it? If it fits, sure. But are you going to get more performance? Once you add that much weight, I mean, these are only made of foam, man. You don't want to weigh them down. You know, I I, I would stay four or 5,000 in the F-35. Um, you know, you could try it again, but it might not be any faster. You might get more flight time, but be, you know, just get less, uh, you know, less performance. That'll be tough. So, Nabil, you asked that question twice. We answered you. asked it three times. We got you, Nabil. Nabil, Nabil. Chris Lowell, that's the first time I've heard music heard music wire struts called chicken wire struts. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody called them chicken wire struts back in the day. Music wire. I just called them chicken wire. But they work, man. I, I always said I have, I have a fresh, I still have the fresh pair that I bought for mine in the box i said i'm only going to put them on when i blow the other ones out and i've never been able to do it on the hawk and i'm not trying to say oh i'm the best pilot in the world because we know <laughs> we know that's not true but i can fly now i can land anything and i'm pretty darn good i'm confident in my uh in my flying that if i'm gonna have a crash for the most part you know it's few and far between but it happens so any questions about this one guys anything you want to see um anything you want me to get back into but I kind of hope that something like this was, um, you know, beneficial for you guys. See how, you know, I do it, whether you consider me a pro or not. I think I'm just a pro because I've done so many as far as building. But, you know, I've learned a lot of tips and tricks, you know, from a lot of people. Watch a lot of videos, but go through your aircraft. We, I, I think the most important thing, if you had just purchased this aircraft, that's how you should go about it. Now, this is ready for main day. Oh, CG. I didn't, I didn't check the CG. I guess we can do that while I'm here. And the throws, we can go through that too. Can we hear a quick whoosh? I think we can. And I'll make sure I don't blow anything off the uh, the back of the table. Transmitter on. Wants to hear a quick whoosh. Now all my batteries at storage charge, so you know it's not full 
full power. Oh, and you know what? Calibrate your ESC. I should do that now before I do anything. So before I give you a whoosh, because let me check. Watch, let me see my throttle. Look at that. So I was able to go up a couple notches before the fan started turning, guys. That's another big thing. A lot of people probably fly their aircrafts like that and wonder, man, somebody else has it and his is faster. Something's wrong with mine. It's like, no, man, you didn't calibrate your ESC. Everything is different. So ESC calibration is so simple. We're going to do it right now. Transmitter off. Plane unplugged. Throttle all the way up. Transmitter on. Oh, sorry. No, plug in first, then... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plug, turn on. Turn on the transmitter. Bring the throttle up. So transmitter's on. Throttle up. Now we plug in and we wait for the first beep. First beep. Now my ESC is calibrated. Now, let's see. The first notch. So I was probably, if I had flown that, I would have probably been at 90% full power. And it would have fl flown. And you'd be like, man, I just, something's wrong with it. It's not, you know, it's not, if somebody else had it out there, you'd say, you know, you'd say, why isn't it going so fast? So now let's give it a whoosh. Whoa, I had to hold that back. That sounded good. And let's actually, I can put the, the fan. Oh, I would have to go over there to change the, you're not going to see it. I would have to brighten up inside there, but 12 blade in runner looking good on that. So now we're plugged in. So now let's see what the throws, let me check my throws while I'm here. Cause we're almost, almost ready. I was lying before almost ready with a full, with my proper check. So what do I got here? I got this now. I hope we get more in stock, but this is a throw. Uh, Patrick Crowsdale had one when I went out, so I grabbed one. We we had them on the website. I'm not sure if we're going to get them back. I hope we do, but if you can find one on Amazon or something, this is a great way to check your uh, to check your throws. So what you would do is, now it's going to be hard for me to show, but first let me get to the book. Oh, you know what? I'm putting in a throttle cut right now so that I don't blow this off the table. Throttle cut. Put it on switch. Let's see. There we go. Throttle cut. I put it on switch E. So now we have a throttle cut on. I hit the, I hit the throttle. Nothing's going to happen. Right? So all about safety first. So now... You would pop this bad boy. It's got zero to 50 millimeters on it in both directions. And it comes with two, with an arm that's even, lo two arms that are even longer. So depending on the model you got. But basically, you pop this on and just get it to the point where the zero zeroes out on your aileron or whatever surface. Oh, I'm hitting the servo. So I do not want to hit the servo underneath. There we go. So bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. And now I'm going to point, I'm going to just bring it up to the camera for you guys to see. So it would be like that. So now when you check your throws, whatever the book tells you, you'll get the proper deflection. Now I know some people like to, uh, uh, I saw a jib, Andrew Williams did a great idea. He uses um, a piece of a piece of um, post-it note. He'll put the he'll slip the post-it note for the aileron like right in between the flap and the aileron, and he'll write. He'll use a ruler on the post-it note to to mark all those, and it'll give you a good idea. Again, it's an idea. You know, the difference between eighteen and nineteen millimeters isn't it shouldn't change too drastically. But you know, the difference between eighteen millimeters and twenty-four millimeters could be a big significant change so you know it, it, it's better than eyeballing it you can get away at this point you could probably get away certain aircraft are going to be very similar but as far as rates goes they are calling so 
I just want to see if I'm even correct. So they said aileron low rate was 18 and high rate was 21. So, you know, three millimeters could, could definitely be the difference. So I'm just going to look at it here. So that's my high rate. Yep, I had it right. 21 and 18. So I had already done this on the other one. And it's funny because different servos, two and a half years apart, and my ailerons were correct. So then you could go to the elevator and do the same thing on the elevator. And then the rudder, I don't, I mean, I guess I should. I don't worry about the rudder too much because rudder, I always, I never put in rates on my rudder. I always just full rudder all the time. I want to have it there in case I need it. Because again, you don't need much when you're flying. But now I, I center that out and elevator saying 22 to 25. Oh, I'm on the I'm on the arm, so my thing was moving up. I was like, why isn't the thing moving? It's all right. Twenty-two. Oh, twenty-two. And what I say, twenty-two and twenty-five. So I went twenty-two. So I did the old standard. What a lot of people say: use the high rates as your use the low rates as your high rates. For your first time so i have the low rate on this was 22 i made that my high and the high rate recommended by the book was 25 i went down to 18 so i went the difference that the book calls for i did that difference uh the opposite direction on my elevator so i could probably get even crazier with it uh if i went but i'm gonna again leave it like that because i was used to it i always loved the way my hawk flies never felt i needed anything to be different with it and then again, you could do it for the rudder, but it's a good tool, guys. Little gauge, a, a rate gauge, I guess you call it. I'm not really sure. What, what did they call it? I forgot what they called it. I had the book. I have the manual for it somewhere. I save everything, but when you need it, right at the, right now, I don't know. It doesn't even say it on here, but I'm sure somebody, throw, throw a post, throw, throw it up on Hobby Squawk or something, and you can get to that, and then see cg excuse me cg you show people how to configure the receiver fail safe setting before maiden flight i don't use the admiral rx but i don't think it has that feature available um i assume it does that would be for another you know I, probably a video i should make because i did a whole series on the gyro stability ones that's something i get to but to be honest right now never done it so am i so sorry <laughs> for me i haven't done that one you caught me you caught me with something i've yet to try but i've never i've never had an issue with it you know but you're right if it does have an option i will definitely get to it because now is the time to do all the in-studio type videos um i will and then the last thing cg so cg 162 millimeters from the intakes to here and this one did not have any marking on it molded in like some of the newer models did so it's showing probably about where this antenna is but i will get let me get my ruler there it is i knew i had it out there somewhere so we're gonna go so metric 162 162 or six and three eighth inches so 162 puts me right behind these two nubs on the top. So this is where my CG should be. So since it's a bottom wing, I'm going to put my finger. It looks like, yeah, right at these panel lines. So you see these panel lines? You're going to be right there for the panel lines. Now I just put my battery in, so I don't even know. I didn't put my battery any which way, but I will use the old little nose heavy but pretty good i'll fly it like that what do you guys think while i stand here see how long i can hold it critical alpha says critical oh alpha's in nice what's up man you just missed an exciting an exciting show of building a bae hawk boom so there you go guys we see jeter now showed you a little bit about the rates we talked about when you're mounting your receiver how you spread the aerials 90 degrees we pulled on everything alpha um oh then a range check that would be something we do uh, at the end you know it'd be a great video alpha's alpha mentioned it but he said a proper pre-flight pre-flight check 
um, video. You know, everybody has little things. So maybe um, what I want to do is I'll create a thread in Hobby Squawk. So I'd love to get everybody's ideas. What do you do on a pre-flight? Like, what are your main, like right now in the comment section, what's the first thing you check when you're doing a pre-flight? And I'm actually, while I have this here, that battery, that's where my battery was. I'll go to the top down shot so you guys can see where that CG was. Oh, hold on. Harder to do with the left hand. There it is. So that's where my CG was. Right there, I have, a, I have a good, I have a decent gap uh, from the tray to where the, the end is. I am about two inches or about 50 millimeters, the end of my battery to where the uh, foam, where the foam tray, where the tray ends. The receiver sticks out a little bit off the tray. So don't go by that, but about two inches from where it goes. So I'm going to mark that, mark it with a pencil. And then I will put 4,000, 4,000 Pro. Because you always want to label it so you know in case you use different, you know, different stuff. Um, you know, this will definitely fit a 5,000 in there. I'm sure you could probably fit a 6,000 in there, the Admiral Pro. But I don't know if I'd want to fly it on that. Because, again, just don't want to weigh it down. You know, it's gonna, it flies so well on this. Uh, Mary Boozer, yeah, range check, guys, is definitely awesome. Sure, something is behind James camera, as he's been saying for a couple episodes now, and one is on my screen right now. Oh, man. Yeah, there's something back there. Should I turn the camera around? No, I'm not going to do that. Actually, guys, while I have you here, so Race 22 crew, range check, first flight of each airplane every time to the field followed by direction verification before takeoff, just in case you have the wrong aircraft loaded in the computer radios. Great. Definitely great. Yeah, I always, always do, a, you know, a control throw check because you just never know, man. Don't rely on technology, you know. It, it can always bite you in the butt sometimes, even though as perfect as these things appear to be, they might not always be perfect. So why, why ever risk? Let me turn my transmitter off. I have my throttle cut set, so put my switch up, and she's looking good. I hope it's British, but no hints yet. No, no hints yet, but we'll get there. Trust me, if we're going to announce something as soon as we do, you guys are all going to know where to tune in uh, for that, because that's what we do. 106, 108 viewers. And I, oh, let me fade back to the main screen. Sorry, I was still on the top down. So here we are. I set everything to 55 degrees and hope for the best. <laughs> ah. You guys are so funny. All right, guys. Well, I have you in here. Tomorrow, I am definitely going live again at noon. Um, like I said, Wednesday, I might not be going live at noon. I will go live Wednesday and definitely join you guys because I want to do it every week this week just because, you know, we're all here doing this and, um, you know, we're all here dealing with this. So I hope it's fun for you guys just to even just to hang out and talk to each other in the chat is what I want to do. But tomorrow we have the option. I got an L39 uh, with the new inrunner we could put together, but I feel it'd be similar to this. I got a tiger cat, which would take a little while longer to do, um, but I'd do it if you want to do it. I've got the 64 millimeter A10, and I got the 64 millimeter F18. Um, maybe build both of those. I could probably do both of those in one shot. But uh, let me know what what one of those four would you guys want to see tomorrow? You know, I'll do my best. Tiger cat's gonna be a you know probably be a big video. I'd probably end up going over two hours with that just because of the twin booms and there is a lot of snaking things through. And I hope I could do that one myself because a few of those twin, the twin aircraft, sometimes you need, it's better to have a helping hand here with you if you're doing those. But F-18 and A-10, Nabil. So Tiger Cat, who else? Vote Tiger Cat. I see two for Tiger Cats. A1090. I wish I could do the A1090. I don't have I don't have one fresh in the box. But if I did the A1064, I could bring my A10, the 90, and put it on the table just so you guys can see. You know what I do love about the 64 millimeter A10? Um, 
you know, our 64 mil, twin 64 A10 is it's six, it's sixteenth scale, so it fits. Your Abrams tank could sit in front of your A10 and match up just like the B24 is sixteenth scale from flight line, and that matches up with your Sherman and everything. So that would be awesome. Oh, T Cat wants a Tiger Cat. That's that's weird. <laughs> is T Cat have anything to do with the Tiger Cat, or is that just random coincidence? All right, it looks like we'll be doing the Tiger Cat tomorrow, if that's what we're doing. And I love the way you go live, James. We're all mostly working from home. Love listening to you while working. Well, thank you. I wish, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, again, it's not about me. It's just motion. You know, it's motion doing this, not necessarily me. So, but I thank you so much. Fires up that airbrush. Oh, airbrushing the Tiger Cat live. Oh, man. The Tiger Cat, though. You did it so good. Uh, I think you did the FMS one. Get me wrong, Boozer. But either way, you did a navy blue Tiger Cat. And he airbrushed it on his screen. Guys, if you want to see some awesome uh, airbrushing, then definitely check out the Merry Boozer RC channel for that. But I should fire up the air the airbrush soon. Yeah, I mean, we could also do... I mean, heck, we don't have to unbox another plane. I do have to weather... The Yag Panther over here. You guys can't see it the way I have my the way I have my set up, but the Yag Panther is awesome. So I don't know what scale this hawk is, but I'm sure it's far too big for a Yag Panther. But imagine, I doubt the Germans would have would have done any damage if the RAF had a plane this size <laughs> flying around in World War II a jet modern jet but i do have to weather that guy up so we could definitely uh you know we could definitely do that um i vote james airbrush as a tiger cat give us some engine string alpha you put me out there and i haven't done it yet you know you want me to mess up a brand new tiger cat but i guess i could it would take a while, but all right, Tiger Cat it is tomorrow, guys. I'll unbox it, we'll get it set up, and we'll do exactly what we did. Maybe we won't do the control horns if I get it set up, and you guys want to see me, <laughs> want to see me in my doctor's mask trying to hit it with an airbrush, then, you know, I'll let you guys vote on that tomorrow for sure. But again, any more questions, guys, on, uh, on what we're doing here today? Because if not, then I do have some other work that has to be finished today. Got that email coming out tomorrow. Um, for you guys and um, yeah can always just repaint it you, you can but do you want to you know that's the that's, I love the way that looks like it's so fresh maybe I mean maybe I'll airbrush I can airbrush the P38 you know he's already built and assembled if I'm gonna do airbrush and maybe I'll do that Wednesday you know because again we have all week it doesn't have to be an unboxing every day because again they're all gonna be kind of similar to what we did here today so I always try to do something if I'm gonna go live I hope it's a learning experience for people because me, I'm I'm not the best teacher. You know, I'm there's still so many things that I have to learn, but I do know a lot and you know, to help out noobs, you know, to help out people who are just getting start in here. So uh boom, boom, boom. for everybody, Miller. Gotta go guys, thanks. Miller RC, thanks for joining. Pearl Jam, do we sell ninety millimeter toilet paper? Yes, but it's one ply so uh watch out <laughs> might have to double up on it we need to make a plane that can carry a tank so we can airdrop it yes yes mojo a 16th scale plane that can fit mm, that would be awesome that would be awesome to crash a 90 millimeter hard enough it makes toilet paper chunks yeah epo foam might might work well for that in a pinch Thanks for showing my Shrek Maiden in last week's email. GB Linden, yes, thanks so much, man. He put together the, the Shrike and the Havoc he's got over there. So he did a great video. I shared it in the email. Hope you guys check him out. He does have a lot of followers already, but could always use some more. And uh, just a good dude. He does his live show Wednesday, hump day. So um, like I said, oh, GB, if I do go live Wednesday, it definitely wouldn't be late and uh, interfere with your show. But it probably won't be at 12 because, again, that's supposed to be my nicest weather day to get out, so I, I, I can't be here at noon for this. We got if we're gonna go out, we're going out, and uh, 
I would just send, I, I'd make sure I'd email, I'd send a, you know, all over Facebook, Instagram, I'll let you guys know an hour before I am going to go live if you want to join me Wednesday. But we'll figure that, that out then. Um, Nick FPV, no, you're the best, man, for even just, for even being here. You know, you guys are the best for, for doing this. You know, we're, it's our job to show you about our products, but I just thought, you know, I'm here anyway, I'm going to be doing this. Why? And now we've got the live thing going, you know, it's perfect. You know, if you're into this stuff, then, you know, joining us and hopefully more people will just go live and everybody should go live every day and give us something to get our minds off of it. Cause I don't know about you guys. I get a little, I'm getting a little stir crazy too. And it's, you know, I go up and down with everything's cool to, is, is, is everything cool? You know, it's like, this is unlike anything that, you know, any of us could have ever imagined. I, I couldn't imagine what we're, you know, this, this sort of quasi world. It's almost like we need gray sports almanac, uh, put us in an alternate reality, an alternate 1985 or an alternate 2020. And we, uh, we got to go get it back. So, uh, that's, that's sort of how I feel. I go up and down with it. It's crazy. Inertia, you're working on the Wilga, uh, the, the Black Horse Wilga. Man, if you're doing that, I'd love to, you know, send me links to your stuff. You know, I'll, I'll definitely share out the video. And if you have the Black Horse Wilga, we're still, we're, oh, and that's the other thing, guys. If you see any products on our website that you guys have that we're still using like a white background, a lot of the Black Horse products, again, we can't build every one um, fast enough on our own to go get the proper pictures for the website and stuff. So like the Wilga's one where a lot of it's just Photoshop stuff that we got from the manufacturer. If you have that Wilga, if you could get some great pictures of it once it's finished, static on the ground, and then a couple, if you have somebody at your club or something that could just get a couple sweet in-air shots, can we send that to, to us guys? We'd love to throw it up. Oh, it's an Airworld Wilga, so don't do, but anything, you know, Roban helicopters are looking for pictures of, you know, things like that. Um, that's it. Ocean Aquarius, how much does this thing cost? Which thing? The the BA Hawk? We have three options of it. We have an ARF option, which I think is less than two. Um, we have the regular version, which right now is on sale for $239 in the States. And this is the high performance version. Comes with the upgraded landing gear and an in-runner system, and it's $279. Um, and again, it comes all schemed up. The assembly here took me an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, if you watch this video, which will go live, you could rebuild it with me if you get one, and it should take you about an hour and 20 minutes because I didn't cut anything out. We did it live here. So, yeah, man, it's a, it's a great price for a great plane, you know, a great trainer plane, and I know that because this is what I learned to fly EDF jets on. I cut my teeth on this one, and uh, it's awesome. Mm -mm. This thing calls. I do my live show on Thursday night, 9 p.m. Would love to have you and Alpha on. Hangar 51 goes live. You're the Thursday nighter at 9 p.m. Hangar, I'm not going to lie. I missed it. Thursday, I, I always forget which is which, but now I know I'm going to put it in. I definitely got to check you out on Thursday. I try to pop in as much as I can, but, you know, guys, when you're working in RC all day, it's hard to tell the wife, hey, I'm going to go hang out down in the, you know, in the studio and, and watch more RC, but I try. You know, I slip out and... I will definitely get in there one time. And when I'm in the chat, you'll know I'm there. But Alpha would love to jump in. 9 p.m. Eastern. Oh, it looks like Alpha's going to be on. You just got yourself a guest, Hangar 51. He will jump in. When can we expect the next free wing jet? When it's ready is the best answer. Great training, even though low wing. Cool. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a Hawk. The Hawk is, you got to think of it, the Hawk is a training aircraft for uh, for scale pilots. So, you know, the Hawk, the T-33 was a trainer. The L-39 is considered a trainer. So, you know, it's a solid aircraft. I mean, the, uh, the Avanti is low wing too, and that's a trainer. Jets act different, man. Jets are, I don't know too many high wing jets, to be honest. You know, I don't even know if that, if that, I mean, there's mid wing, you know, the Venom. Oh, you know, it's another great, Great aircraft for a beginner too. If you, if the price and the size, the Venom, uh, Mary Boozer will tell you. I'll tell you the Venom is also excellent aircraft. It all depends, obviously, though, on uh, on your price range. You know, if you if the cost doesn't matter to you and you could go big like the F twenty two to start on a jet, you can do it. You know, I'm telling you, you can do it. If you know how to fly something already, you could cut your teeth on an aircraft like that. Do you used to pretend to be anti-ship missiles? Oh, I, I missed that conversation. Yeah, Alpha is a bit 
Let's do that. The upgraded gears make life amazing. Totally. Buses are always rolling. How about a Yak 130? I don't. I would unbox a Yak. I just don't have it here. I was just unboxing some of the planes that I had. Again, I go through what I got to bring to shows. Um, you know, before the start of every season, and just see which ones are still presentable. You know, because I only want to take. You know, I try to keep them in as pristine a condition as I can. But uh, eventually, some just get too banged up where you're like, ah, oh, that doesn't look good. You know. My, my original hawk is just, it's beat to hell. But it flies great. It still flies great. just doesn't look nice sitting on the table. So I had got this one in and was going to build it anyway. But uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to take it to another event uh, in the five future. Oh, the Yak-130, as far as a good flyer, that's one of the few free wings I haven't uh, flown myself. But a lot of guys in here go in the Hobby Squawk threads. You'll see a lot of people swear by the Yak-130 as a solid, solid flyer. But it's one of maybe four free wing models that I haven't flown yet. I haven't flown the 90mm F-104. I never flew a Yak in either in either way. Um, and then the only other two 64s I never flew were the 64A-10 and the 64F-18, which I have in the box. They're both the high-performance versions of those. So uh, that's why I got them here, because I wanted to bring those to shows too. But the A-10 I really wanted to see... Because it's 16 scale, I got to get some pictures of the A-10 with the Abrams and the Sherman and the German tanks with the B-24 because that's 16 scale as well. Please buy the window maker. Hard wheels, crap retracts, weak doors, no parts. Winter Wolf. Winter Wolf, what are the new weak flight P-51 is trash. I don't know. Looks, it looks like a solid aircraft to me. He fly P-51, you know. I I mean, I hope maybe you just got a lemon. I, you know, it happens. It happens to us, too, sometimes. But uh, you know, it seems like a pretty solid aircraft. The guys who are getting it like it. I mean, if you like P-51s, then, you know, I would be hard-pressed to say that's not one of the better ones out there just because it's the newest ones, you know. James, can I put FPV on the F-9 Panther 64, and how would you do it? Yeah, I mean, you could put FPV on anything if you have a small enough system, you know. Again, weight is where you're going to be limited with, with a 64mm jet, you know. Um, so you might have to lower the battery. Hi, Anna. You might have to lower the battery, um, you know, battery size, but it depends on how small a system you can get. I know they make really small FPV systems, so you can get it in there, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure it would work. But I'm sure we might have more to say about FPV um, in the future as well. Maybe we'll be able to do that. But right now, we don't currently have any FPV gear. I try to do it. I haven't flown FPV in a long time either. I used to love it, but just haven't had it. So haven't had a reason to, if you will. Alex flies it because he chases with his drone. But that's that. P51 is solid. I have the 1200 along with 1200 Corsair. You know... I want to get my hands on a, on a V2 Eurofighter or even a V3, hint in. I know a lot of people, it's funny how the Eurofighter became like the most popular, like a popular throwback when, you know, the Typhoon that, that Free Wing had that got discontinued. Like the second it leaves, then everybody wants it. But I think it was one of those that when it was there, not many people wanted it. So, you know, when they're available, when something's available and you love it, get it, you know. We do our best to keep as many going, but there's only so many you can, you know, there's only so many planes that a company can produce at some time. So for in order for sometimes for a new one to come in, something's got to leave, you know, it's like anything else eventually, or you got to, or, the, or they upgrade it and maybe it does come back, but that's something you got to ask Alpha. So guys, I'm going to stay on for another six minutes. I'm going to do a hard cut at two. So this was another two hour show today. Um... And I thank you again so much for joining. How many people do we still have in here? It's probably know, still 101 people. Thank you so much, man. So, um, yeah, yeah. thank you so much. It's awesome. It's awesome. Maybe I do have to experiment this week with a, with a later show just to see if we get more people. Because I'm sure there's a lot of essential employees uh, in the RC hobby, too, just based on what a lot of people do for a living. But if you're a pilot out there, I hope... Things are okay for you. See a lot of those planes just sitting in the hangar. It's crazy. Crazy times. Alpha liked my scheme he did. 
Single engine canard would be easier. Oh, Alpha's doing that. Hanja from Indonesia. Thank you so much, man. That's awesome. What time is it there? Uh, T-Rob, A-Rob, tomorrow I'm going to start at noon again. Tomorrow's a noon time uh, one. But Wednesday's the only one that won't be noon. So I'll come on live definitely tomorrow, Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern. And then Friday will be episode 13 of our standard live show that we've always been doing. Um, it's just Wednesday is a, it's supposed to be a really nice day and we want to get out and fly. So I want to leave here. We got, we're going to, we're going to try a different field, um, from where we normally go. And that's an hour drive there and an hour back. So if we leave at 9am to get there, I'll never make it back in time for 12. So when I do get back, uh, from that day of flying, then I'm just going to go live and it, it'll probably be, I'm guessing four or 5 PM Eastern on Wednesday, but tomorrow as of right now, what everybody said, we're going to be here live and we're going to unbox and assemble the Flightline Tiger Cat. You know, and then I could grab the P38 here and do a comparison because that's our other twin engine, Flightline Bird. And I love the Tiger Cat. That was one of the first planes that I bought. I bought one for myself, but then eventually I, I got rid of it just because it was getting a little too old. So we got another one in for shows to look at and we're going to do that. Greeting from the Netherlands. Yes, greetings, Tan Lutkins, Lut Lutkins, Lut Lutkins. Hey there, we have we have some people. You know, our warehouse is in the Netherlands too. Motion R C E U. That's where it is. Inertia. What's your best grass ops jet? Again, any of the any of the T thirty three, the L thirty nine, the Avanti, eighty millimeters and up. Pretty much are all decent off grass. The Venom takes off in a heartbeat off grass and the, the 262 works great on grass for me and that's a twin 70 but more than enough power but um yeah for the most part any 80 millimeter once it has the big the big uh you know the wider wheels and stuff they should all they're all made for grass ops that's where you know alpha will say this too but you know that's why a lot of times people like oh that tire isn't scale well we're not making scale models as much as we're making <coughs> models that could be flown by more people you know sometimes you have to sacrifice some scale because we know a majority of the runways around the world are grass you know not everybody has the benefit of a pavement where they can change the nose gears on certain planes to make them smaller tires to look real um to me i don't care about i don't concern myself with that stuff because when it's sitting on the ground i'm not looking at it I'm, when it's in the air that gear's retracted and i'm that's when i want to see it as long as it looks good that way then I'm comfortable, but, um, you know, that's where it just comes down. Like you want it to, it's got to work, you know, scaling down a model. We're not, we're not making scale models as much as we're making good flying models first, you know, and you, you fit a box. So Alpha's explained this numerous times, but basically you set, all right, we're going to make X plane. It's got to be this size. It's got to be this price. It's got to fit in a box this big. And those are my constraints. So now what can I do? What things are going to get sacrificed? What things can, can we work on? It's, you know, if, if money wasn't an option and size wasn't an option or transportation and logistics were thrown out the window, every one of these models would be perfectly scale. You know, it's just, it doesn't always work that way. You know, you want a model to fly well first, and that should be the, the best thing uh, going. Yeah, we kind of abandoned the on on board in some of our flight reviews because people would get mad when we would cut to it. But I always like to cut to the on board camera when I'm in my downwind because like who wants to see the plane? You know, when I'm just straight going in there coming for a pass, we would always cut just just to give something you know more pleasurable. But we could, I love on board too. So usually when we do put on board on there, it's for the it's for the hyped up product videos that we do. You know, because every release usually gets an unboxing and assembly. It gets a flight review and it gets the hype, just two minutes of good music, you know, fun behind the editing, because that's what me and Alex love to do. You know, that's that's where our heart was. That's where we started, and it's always fun to do that kind of stuff. But lately also, I've been adding Raw Flights, you know, Maiden, where I don't even talk. So, like, the new, the next new thing you'll see, I definitely have a Maiden video where I don't say a word. I just, that's the first flight. I'm just, the plane's just up there, and it's me, 
making sure it flies well and I can land it well, you know, before I even begin to talk about it. And I like to try to get at least, at least 10 flights in on something. But I also haven't called any of my flight reviews flight reviews. I just call them flights. Like, you know, there are people like Rich Baker and guys like that who can go so much more in depth. You know, I'm your average guy. I'm right there. Like, I can fly anything. I don't know why it does everything it does, but I, you know, I do my best to, you know, to show you that if I can fly it, then you should be comfortable flying it. You know, that's how I am. I, I, I like to be every man. But guys, we're hitting the two minute mark, uh, the two p.m. mark. I'm getting hungry. I want to eat some lunch and uh, get back to work. So I'm gonna call call it here. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. Tomorrow we'll be back at 12 p.m. with the Flightline Tiger Cat. I'm probably not going to airbrush it, even though you guys, it depends on how fast I can put it together. But it's probably going to take a little longer than the Hawk because this was just 12 screws. But we'll work hard on it. We'll work fast. And we'll have a prop bird for the week. So again, guys, enjoy your Mondays. If you're home, get your best to get some work done. And uh, if you're out there, hopefully you're watching this on a replay. But either way, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. And we'll see you next time at Motion RC. Now, Alex told me to click this button right here.